this is uh, Weapons Tech Mac coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. And uh, tonight, I've got a gun that I picked up several years ago, and it's been one of my favorites. Of course, all the guns are my favorites if you haven't figured that out. But I picked this guy up about four years ago. This pretty Smith & Wesson 1911. So first off, let's make sure she's all clear. Nothing there. And nothing there. So this is uh, Smith & Wesson 1911. And uh, it's a real nice gun, I'll tell you. <clears throat> it's a full-sized 1911. 45 ACP. Uh, of course, it's a single stack. And it's a good gun. This one is probably about seven years old. I picked it up from a pawn shop. And it's got, I would like to kind of update the sights. It's got a blackout back sight and then the front sights. I had put a little bit of a, a sight paint on it. I probably ought to put me some night sights on it, although they are fully adjustable sights. Uh, this is, of course, 1911 single action. And uh, it's got an ambidextrous safety. And the safety's real nice. It's got an extended beaver tail here. And of course, the 1911's got a grip safety as well. Um, it does have a little bit of an extended mag release, and the mags just drop right out. And of course, most of the mags for 1911 will fit in this thing, whether they're Wilson Combat, Kimber, Kimber or, or whatever. Um, they fit and work just fine. Um, right now, it's got a an ACT mag, which are not, I don't think they're the best, but uh, I don't have any problems with it. It's got a skeletonized trigger and uh, really, really nice, good looking gun. Very nice uh, stippling there on the, the front grip and back here as well. The grips are nice and, and textured. So this gun, even with wet hands, you can hold on to it real good. Um, this has, I would say, probably a oh, pretty heavy trigger. I haven't checked it out, but early on, man, this thing was real hard to to slide the back, the, 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 pull the slide back. It's getting a little easier after I put rounds through it. Um, one of the things I heard somebody the other day talking about, they didn't see the need for ambidextrous safety on these 1911s. Of course, a lot of your Kimbers and Dan Wessons, the more expensive ones, don't have an ambidextrous safety, which kind of bothers me. Uh, maybe it's because when I was a police officer, I actually got into a confrontation and had to, and I'm right-handed, had to switch hands and engage the shooter and take my 45. I carried a 45 at the time, 1911. And thank God it had ambidextrous safety on it. And I took the safety off my left hand. Of course, with one of them guns that 1911s only have the safety on the other side, you're going to have to flip it over and take it off that way. And that just, if you don't have use of this other hand, your strong hand, for some reason or another, um, it's important to be able to have that safety on either side. If you're doing a 1911, I know some people don't particularly like carrying 1911s because you gotta carry them in full ready to go position with the hammer back, safety engaged and ready to pull and go. That's the only way I'll carry my 1911s is like this, ready to go. And I know it bothers some people. I've carried them that way ever since I started carrying 1911s all the way back in my times in the Navy. And unless we were ordered or particular rules, you know, that they be all the way safe and, and uh, just rounds in the magazine or maybe even just an empty gun. Uh, if, it, if I was on duty <coughs> and uh, 
as a police officer or a military police, I was mastered arms for a, a good period of time in the Navy. And <clears throat> this thing was already ready to go. Now, let's see. <clears throat> this is a pretty gun. I mean, it's very handsome. I've got a couple of really handsome guns. And Smith & Weapons seems to be, uh, you know, this and the, the 629. I've got two very handsome, beautiful guns. It's just the uh, artwork, the feel of them. Now, this does not have any kind of Picatinny rail or anything like that. But it does have forward striations. And the ones back here. And they're, they're pretty aggressive. You can grab hold of it and chuck this baby back. Not a big deal. Um... Of course, this is the standard old 1911 with the forward bushing and taking her down that way. Uh, it's got the five inch barrel. And uh, yeah, this is just a very accurate pistol. I think I'd be even more accurate if I changed the sights out so that my old eyes be able to handle a little better than these. Um, but you know, it, it still does a pretty damn good job. Now, you kind of compare it, uh, you know, I, I carry 1911s a lot of the time, 1911-style guns. In fact, right now I'm carrying a <clears throat> Springfield EMP-40. And, of course, she's all ready to go. This is my, my concealed carry. And I just like them, you know. I'm going to hit what I aim at with one of these. Now, I do the same thing with my Glocks as well. Uh, of course, some people say, you know, 1911, you only got, for the most part, eight plus one, so you got nine rounds. And uh, so why would you carry that when you could have like a, you know, a, a Glock that's got like 17 plus one or uh, something such as that? Well, of course, the 17 plus one Glocks are mostly nine millimeter. This carries a, a, a good punch with the 45, and I know some people like to make fun of the 45, tear it apart. But I'll tell you this, the 45 was developed to put down people. My grandfather fought in the Philippine insurrection over there <clears throat> at the turn of the century in 1900. And uh, he was over there and he had those 38s. And, you know, it didn't do very well until they got the, uh, the revolver that was shooting actual 45. Of course, this would come along later, and it put people down. That's for damn sure. Now, you know, to talk about putting people down, my Glock 20, well, you know, that's going to do the same thing. Plus, it's carrying 15 plus 1, or 16 plus 1. I remember, it's had a while since I had the Glock 20. I'm sure you all tell me. <clears throat> but uh, I'm still a fanboy of 1911s, and this is so much better looking than a Glock but hey, you know, the old saying, sure it's better looking, but is better looking gonna kill your opponent? Well, well, maybe not. But these things have fought in many wars, been very successful at it, and I shoot these really well. Now, I know I've had some people <clears throat> ask me, well, what do you carry for EDC? What do you suggest I carry? Well, whatever you shoot the best with. They're like, well, you carry all kinds of things. You carry nine millimeter, you carry a 40, you carry 45, you carry 10 millimeter sometimes. You even sometimes carry that 629 with some 44 special Hornady defense rounds in it. But uh, in the wintertime, when things are a little heavier, you know, I'll carry a bigger gun. In the summertime, I'm probably, when I got shorts and things of that nature on, yeah, I do wear some shorts. You look back to my summer videos, and I'm probably carrying my uh, my uh, shield or my uh, little Kimber micro ESV. But uh, you know, sometimes even the EMP40. But I'll tell you, you know, just make sure you're comfortable with what you're shooting. Now I'm going to take this out shooting on Monday, and I'll have a good video yet. Um, but it's a pretty gun. We'll do a little nuts and bolts breakdown of the thing and and uh, tell you how, I, you know, I think it goes. You know, I know this thing quite well since I've had it almost five years. 
And, uh, you know, that's kind of it for the beginnings of this pretty baby right here. The only thing is, <clears throat> I got to fix this bushing right up here. Um, the, the screw in there screwed up, so I got to replace the bushing, get a new screw. Put that back up in there. Uh, but other than that, I mean, this thing is in really good shape. It's a lovely pistol. And uh, well, that's it. We'll move on to taking some range time, and then I'll do a nuts and bolts breakdown and then finish it up. All right, to uh, continue the re review of this Smith & Wesson 1911, it's been a couple of days since I started this thing. We'll verify that she's empty. Yes, definitely empty. Uh, this is an earlier model. It's not the E-Series. It just says Smith & Wesson 1911. It's stainless, full metal, just like I indicated. Weighs 40 ounces empty and about 47 ounces with an eight round loaded magazine. So this is a heavy gun. Um, and it's basically got the same exact stats as a GI 45. They're right about exactly the same weight as this is. Of course, you know, the grips and the finish are different. Uh, of course, this is a single action. Uh, 45 ACP, the barrel length is five inches. Uh, capacity is eight plus one with some magazines. I got 10 plus one. Uh, it depends on what you, you're buying. Safety is manual and grip safety. So you've got a grip as normal with the 1911 and this has an ambidextrous safety, manual safety, thumb safety, like I indicated. It's got a skeletonized trigger and hammer it has front and rear striations uh, the sights are adjustable the front is in there with the dovetail uh, they are not not night sights um, i probably ought to get me a front night sight for this thing i guess i don't know i carry it only once in a while in the winter time i'd rather carry my dan wesson vigil commander because that's a lot lighter than this thing um, but this is a very accurate, fun pistol to shoot. Um, of course, the frame finish is stainless steel. Um, barrel type is stainless steel. Slide, stainless steel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take this down and show you compared to an old standard GI 45. And uh, now com compare the two. And then... Uh, We'll kind of do a final nuts and bolts on this thing, and that'll be it for the old Smith & Wesson All right, so here it is compared to the standard old GI 1911. Of course, it's an ATI 1911, which is basically a knockoff of the Colt 1911. And they're just exactly the same for the most part, other than finish and grips and, and you know, the front striations. Um, both pretty damn accurate guns, even the old... The old ATI, I've done a review on that previous to them. So you can see, it's just about, it's exactly the same size, same weight, everything, but it's just a little nicer gun to shoot. A little bit more of a Cadillac. The recoil is not too bad. Uh, of course, the, the weight is going to cut down on that recoil. And it's just a pretty gun. You know, that just stands out. Very pretty gun. You see down here, you got the, 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 the stippling down there on the front of the 
the grip and on the back strap. And it does have an extended beaver tail, so you're not gonna get any hammer bite. And uh, yeah, that's basically the run on this guy. So, what's my final take on this? Well, as it is with most of my guns, I give it a high thumbs up, and they're fairly expensive. They're running about eight, nine hundred dollars, uh, but you get what you pay for. This is a, a, a Cadillac of a gun to shoot. It shoots just as well as my Dan Wesson, and uh, of course, it's a lot heavier because Dan Wesson's frame is aluminum. But uh, I think maybe if I replace the front blade on this thing with a night side or something a little more visible. Um, you can see the sights on this. The rear one's adjustable and all that, but I don't know. I just don't like that front sight very well. Uh, maybe just me. Um, hard to pick up. I put a little blop of that glow uh, stuff that you get in the store put on your sights, and it don't worth work worth work worth a pink. But um, anyway. This particular gun, I give it a high thumbs up. It's a damn good gun. You ever get a chance to get a Smith & Wesson 1911? I'd take it if you got the extra cash to do it. No, it's a mid-level 1911. It's not up there with the Kimbers or the Dan Wessons quite or, you know, Wilson Combat, all that expensive stuff. But uh, it's a pretty good 1911, I'll tell you that. And so thumbs up on a Smith & Wesson 1911. And this is Weapons Tech Matt coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. As always, God bless Texas. God bless the United States. And long live the Republic.